Hi everyone, it's Meredith and welcome to my Taurus Rising video. Tonight we are going to have so much fun. Get ready to be riveted by the truth of Taurian energy and Taurus Rising. It's going to be really exciting. So stick with me because you're going to want to watch this video all the way through. If you are a Taurus, or if you have a lot of planets in the second house, or if you are Taurus rising, or if your loved one has a lot of Taurian energy, this is the video you're not gonna want to miss. So sit back with me and um, I've got my really wonderful Taurus fine china cup and I'm drinking my tea tonight with you. And I want you to sink into this video with me because I'm gonna tell you about the deeper side of Taurus. I'm going to tell you about the parts that you can't easily see, and I'll be talking to you specifically about Taurus rising, but I'm going to invite you to watch my Everything Taurus video because I did it a while back ago, but it's really good, and I think the two videos are going to give you a really deep, deep, deep understanding where you will grow compassion and sympathy and empathy and love, and you'll understand why Tauruses are the way they are. I'm going to show you what others sometimes don't say. And I want to show you the, the side that others overlook sometimes. Um, I don't want to stereotype Taurus for you. I want to go into the deep, deep trenches. So by now, you probably know me after watching so many of my videos in my Rising Sign series. If you haven't done that yet, I invite you to go do that. But you know that the Rising Sign is the mask in which a person hides behind. And it also is the thing that expresses their outward persona. And it is the lens in which the person sees out of. And it's how we ask the world to experience us. It is also your early childhood and it is literally your formative years. So zero to 12. It's how you were birthed, how you entered into this world, and it is how you interact with every single new experience that you come into contact with. So how do you do new beginnings? How do you do fresh starts? That is your rising sign. So this is for all you Taurus risings and all of you who want to understand Taurus energy at a really deep level. Let's go in. Trust me, Tauruses do not like the mask to come off. I am going to reveal them to you today, and they kind of actually hate this. So in this video, you're going to learn three to four really important things about Taurus rising energy. First, everyone's going to tell you that they're stubborn and they're obstinate and they're hard-headed, but no one is going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why they are this way the real reason, but it's a secret. So we're going to out them in this video. You want to stick with this till the end because it gets really good at the end. Oh my gosh. I'm also going to tell you why do they get crazy jealous? Let me know if you have experienced the Taurus Rising's jealousy. Oh my God, not fun. So I'm going to tell you why they do this and you'll learn how to spot a Taurus rising out of a room and uh, what they physically look like, what their physical characteristics are like and why they're like that. And last, you are going to learn in the very tail end of this video how to turn on a Taurus rising and how to make them never want to leave your ever loving arms. That is going to be really interesting. Let's, let's go a little deeper right now. Let's dive in together. The virtues of Taurus rising. When you meet a Taurus rising, you are looking at a person who wants to embody um, stability, practicality, and calmness. Taurus rising will most likely walk into a room with a grounded, even keel, kind of heaviness about them. They don't bounce. Calm, quiet, placid, and a, usually a beautiful grace about themselves. They see and they experience the world and all new beginnings through the planet of Venus. Venus is their chart ruler. So, which you know that, I know you know that, but wherever Venus is at in the Taurus Risings chart, it is 
absolutely imperative to know that because that acts as the generator, the fuel for the entire persona, the fuel for the relationship between themselves and how they ask to be seen in the world. So if your Venus is conjunct Saturn, you're going to be a really different kind of Taurian than if your Venus is conjunct Jupiter. Now, those are opposite kinds of Taurus rising. So as you now know, hopefully you know me by now and my channel, I don't do sun sign astrology because this is way, way bigger than that. You're not just a Taurus. You're not just a Libra. You know, there's over 40,000 different elements that I can see inside your chart. So when we unzip you and we look inside to the blueprint of your soul, that's what I call your natal chart, Taurus rising is just one of the 40,000 different things that we're looking at. And we have to know, we have to know where Venus is. So where is Venus in your chart if you are a Taurus rising? Because that is how your Taurus rising is going to operate. What I want to ask you is if you know where your Venus is and is your Venus also in Taurus? If it is, you are a double Taurus and this will resonate very loudly with you. So leave me a comment in the notes below and let me know if you are a Taurus rising where your chart ruler Venus is. I will give you more details if I can, if, if I have the time, I'll give you more details about you specifically. But right now I just want to tell you my name is Meredith with Soul Navigation. Um, and if you can't tell, I absolutely love sharing my knowledge with you and uh, my astrology with you. I have my own private practice. I've been in business for over 20 years where I do readings all day long. That's all I do. My website's being revamped right now. So I'm just going through my online scheduler. You can find that in the notes below. You can contact me there, book a reading, order a chart, and you can also send me a direct message or just leave me your comments so everybody can see and everybody can benefit in the um, comments section below. So also, I would love for you to be a subscriber because I do do free readings and I do this once a month through my live feed and you'll get a little notification if you ring the bell and subscribe. So hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified for my next live feed. And I'll talk to you about that. A little bit later. Um, by the way, if you didn't watch my other live feed, it's called Finding Love and Compatibility in the Chart. You really should. It's really, really good. It's really cool how I can show you how to see who you're most compatible with in that live feed. And I give you the formula and I teach you how to do it so you can start reading your own chart and others. But um, tell me just one thing in the comments below. What would you like my next live feed to be on? Would you like me to do my, my next series, maybe on the moon signs, maybe Mars, exploring your sexuality and or finding money in your chart? What subject are you more, most interested in? Let me know because I like making you happy and I can talk about anything. So just give me an idea. Okay, so back to Taurus Rising. Taurus Risings have a relationship to beauty, perseverance, and steadfastness. And they are the most determined out of the entire zodiac. They have a steely determination. They are the pragmatic builder. They are the calming sensualist. And they are the persevering protector. Did you hear all that? Write those things down. That is the embodiment of Taurus rising. Let's look deeply at these different archetypes that operate inside of them. Perseverance is one of their strongest characteristics. And when you are a Taurus rising, you have a persevering approach to life. You are, um, and when you're, when you're persevering, you, you need to be one thing for sure. You need to be headstrong. Tauruses aren't just headstrong and stubborn for, you know, good times and giggles. No, they're stubborn for a reason. There is a purpose to their fixity. Say that three times, fixity. <laughs> they are the bull, but you knew that, right? They um, are fixed and they are an earth sign, obvi, right? So why do Tauruses get headstrong and stubborn? Well, there's a few reasons. One, they want to build something of worth. They want to build something of worth, of deep, deep worth. And two, they don't like change. Why don't they like change? Why don't they like change? And this is the part that I love giving you because everybody else gives you the what? They don't like change. They're stubborn, but they don't tell you why. 
And I want to tell you why, because that's where we have the breakthrough. That's where you build compassion and love for your fellow Taurians or your Taurus risings. Why don't they like change? Because they have a deep, and I mean deep, loyalty. They have a loyalty to their loved ones, to their family, to their money, to their home, to their belief system, to their boss, to their work, to anything that they have invested in and anything that has proved to be of value to them. They, they invest deeply in things and people that have become invaluable to them. When you are that intensely loyal, you become laser focused and invested so deeply that you become entrenched in the agenda of keeping that very thing alive and well, no matter what the cost is, right? So they can become so ensconced, so merged in, so grooved in deeply, like tile grout in the bath, that they become immovable and they become unbudgeable around that thing that they value. They become planted. They become rooted like an oak tree. Go try to budge a bull. Try to poke a bull <laughs> and move them. Try to coax a bull to stop whatever it's doing and just mosey on over and stroll on over to you and start talking to you. No, it's not so easy to coax a bull. They won't. They, they don't move easily. They don't let go of whatever it is they value and they sink so deeply in it that it becomes unbearable, just unbearable to release and let go. They can't do it. They, they're accused of being very controlling for that very reason. They'll walk, they, they will talk about moving homes for 20 years before they actually do it. They are so loyal. They will talk for 30 years about getting a divorce before they actually go and file papers. Actually, they won't even go file the papers. They'll just be so resistant to their spouse. They'll make their spouse go file the papers. They are even loyal to their bad habits. They are loyal to the wounds and the misery that they know and that they have become familiar with. And that is a very sad truth. They will be loyal to their bad habits and their misery. That's how loyal they are. They don't even want to break free from their wounds, oftentimes. Um, if they're healthy, they will. If they have some Gemini in their chart, they probably will. Okay, so listen to this. This is a perfect example of Taurus rising energy. And after this video, please scroll down to the notes because I want you to go click on this article that I posted in the notes section. So I posted an article about a bull that was hit by a car in Hong Kong in the street. And there was a pack of cows and the bull was fatally wounded. It is so sad, but it is also so beautiful because those cows would not leave. They would not leave the dying bull that was hit by the car that was dying in the street. It was so painful and so sweet of a vision to see. And I want you to go look at that article because that is the embodiment of the loyalty of a Taurus. They will not leave a soldier, a dead soldier. They won't leave a soldier, but they also will not leave a dead soldier on the battlefield. Tauruses and Taurus, Taurus Rising values their comrades so deeply. So go check out that article and read it and, and look at the, the depth of love when a Taurus Rising loves you, what it looks like. So Taurus Risings believe that it is their mission to protect others and themselves. And they're committed to being protectors because they see themselves as strong, like the oak tree offering shade to natives. You know, the trees to our ancestors used to be, our ancient ancestors used to be the air conditioning system that we relied on. And so the Taurus rising protects itself as pragmatic and stable and strong and comforting and sturdy, like the oak tree. They want you to see them that way so much so that they will actually develop that about them and you will most likely feel a little stronger and a little safer in the presence or in the arms of a Taurus rising you know who wouldn't want the strength and the power of the oak tree or the bull right next to them right if you want to get them to move 
move into your agenda, your perspective, or your house, or your bed, you need to give them one thing and one thing only. Okay, maybe not the bed. <laughs> maybe not the bed. <laughs> but your agenda, your perspective, your belief system, um, or your home, right? You need to give them this one thing and this one thing only. And it's a big deal, people, okay? Geminis and Sages and Aries uh, and Pisces, you know, the more impatient people of the Zodiac, listen up. They really need one thing to be persuaded, and that is, you ready? Dun, dun, dun. Time. Time. They need time. They need time to stew. They need time to chew on things. And they probably need a lot more time than you have. <laughs> they're realistic um, and they're realists. And they need your idea to be embedded in common sense. They are not pie in the sky, fanciful dreamers with giant imaginations, uh, riding unicorns and talking to leprechauns and believing in the impossible and gambling away. No. Mm -mm. If the odds say that it is um, most likely that, that your idea is most likely going to fail, if your agenda isn't really rooted and grounded in pragmatics, they are not doing it. Nope, nope, nope. So make sure your idea is backed up with pragmatics. Make sure your idea isn't too crazy for your Taurus rising. Now let's talk about the calming sensualist, as I mentioned earlier in them. These people are going to lead with their senses. So what does this mean? And I don't mean their senses like in their mind, although it's, that's true too. But their senses are their gift. They're going to seek out things that really light up their senses. If it tastes good, if it feels good, if it looks good, if it smells good, and if it sounds good, they will want it. They will maybe even, in fact, have created it because they like all the senses to be aroused in everything they do. Taurus Risings are oftentimes absolutely amazing cooks. If you're a Taurus Rising, tell me if you're a good cook. If you're a Taurus rising and you're not a good cook, tell me if you're an Aquarian or if you have a big Aquarius in your chart. Because I find that Taurus risings in combination with almost every single sign except Aquarius will be phenomenal, phenomenal cooks. And they'll be complex cooks. I'm not talking about boiling pasta. I'm talking about, you know, layers upon layers with tastes and herbs and yummy. So they love, 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 love good food. And they're, they're amazing chefs. Usually they're usually amazing dressers. They oftentimes are great musicians. Um, they are great financial investors and they are great nurturers because they understand the importance of making all the senses comfortable. They love the succulent. They love the juicy. They love the yummy parts of life and parts of love. They hate bad smells, bad tasting food. Who doesn't, right? But to them, this is the first or second in the list, in a long list of values. So if you really, really want to turn them on, make them happy or make them never want to to leave you. Seduce them through touch, taste, smell, sight, and sound. You get the idea, right? A warm bubble bath with gorgeous music, a beautiful room, a beautiful body, oil for a massage with um, gorgeous essential oil candles and give them your favorite yummy aromatic drink and a nibble of buttery, yummy, yummy indulgent food like a flaky pie crust outside at night in the fresh air under the stars. Oh, they'll be in heaven. And by the way, if you are not using butter, you cannot please a Taurus rising. <laughs> you have to use butter. <laughs> if you want to know, if you want to learn more about your Taurus rising lover, I really, really, really recommend you go purchase my love and relationships report. It is amazing. It's the best on the market. If you have both people's birth times, it can be up to 30 pages long. And it just depends how many aspects you guys have with, with each other, but it is truly the best report. You can't find this report. You're not going to get this on Astro Deans. You're not going to get this on the internet. 
it is so good and it's $30. It's like, who cares? It's so cheap. It's a fraction of the price of a reading and you will love, 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 love it. You'll see how they feel about you and um, you'll see the relationship through their perspective. If you do have a Taurus rising lover, tell me about them. Or if you are a Taurus rising, tell me about you a little bit. Tell me about the sensual parts of your life. I want to live vicariously through you because I'm trying to grow the Taurus part of my life and um i i don't have a lot of tourists in my chart i actually only have one tiny teeny thing and i'm envious i'm jealous i only recently i have so many funny tourist stories i would love to share them with you maybe maybe i'll do that in a more candid <laughs> candid video but um i had a roommate who has a tourist moon and oh my god she just made me laugh so hard she's going to be watching this video because she's over there in her her bed we shared a hotel room she's over there in her bed with a cashmere blanket eating chocolate bonbons in the morning and i am a scattered mess trying to analyze you know which classes are the best classes for us to take and um we were just in two totally different places and i was so envious when she pulled out her fresh organic cotton washcloth and essential oil sea salt scrub for her face and i'm over there using sandpaper <laughs> the cheapest thing I can find, uh, a dirty washcloth probably that I used the night before. <laughs> so I am envious of the Taurian energy. So I want to know, uh, make me envious, help me live vicariously through your amazing, fancy, fabulous, fantabulous self. Simplicity is the name of the game for Taurus Risings. Remember I said the calming sensualist, their whole goal is to tamp down drama, chaos, the crisis, and the complexity of life and distill it down to the most simple fraction or fact. They only need one. They like doing one thing at a time and they like being very, very calm. They will leave you if you are drama or I should say they will resist you. They are simple creatures and I like to say they they are indulgent in the three F's. It's a secret. Food, fucking and feel goods. <laughs> That pretty much sums up my Taurus Rising video. Okay, we can sign off now. <laughs> That's it. Don't hate me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really, I really try not to swear on here, but uh, sometimes it just pops out because at their worst, they are self-indulgent. They can become un bearably lazy. They can be prone to conserving their energy rather than using it. And their whole lives can, when they're unhealthy, become totally stagnant and routine. And um, they can be stuck in total inertia, like not wanting to get up off the couch, just watching uh, television all day long. And they can drive you nuts. They can literally become stuck in their lazy boy chair. I think a Taurus invented the lazy boy chair. Will somebody look that up for me? Who invented the lazy boy chair? <laughs> was it a Taurus or was uh, the inventor's muse a Taurus or Taurus rising? Okay, let's talk about the calm. Like, why do they move so slowly? Why do they like no drama, but they're so baffled and confused why drama is all around them? They truly don't think that their resistance is what creates the drama at all. But they are like immovable brick walls that just will resist. And that's how they passively fight, by the way. They passively fight by resisting you, by not indulging in you, by just being totally stoic to you, stonewalling you. That's how they will fight with you. And they don't think that that creates the drama. They think that they're totally sane and normal and that you're the crazy one because you're flitting around <laughs> trying to trying to provoke them to get a reaction out of them because they're stonewalling you. But what I want to ask you is this. What house, if you're not a Taurus rising, what house do you have Taurus in? Or what planet do you have Taurus in? Um, because that is where you will want to get rid of the crazy. See, Taurus rising feels like the chaos. Here's the why. I'm giving you the why. This is the big part. Taurus rising feels that the chaos. Oh, my little Taurus cat is here. Uh, she might come into the video. She's so cute. She's uh make that. Look how cute this face is. Look at this face. 
She's so stinking cute. Look at her. You don't want to look in the camera? She's so cute. Anyways, she is the laziest, cutest, snuggliest cat. Oh my God, she is so kind. And she is so, so lazy. This is Aurora. But this is where people get confused. Because Taurus Rising feels like the chaos is going to interrupt their agenda and disrupt their desire for simple, simple security. This is why people misunderstand their desire to keep things simple, including their conversation, their communication, and their lifestyle. And people think that they're just flat out boring. And they really aren't being boring. They are just keeping things stable and predictable and calm and simple. And at the bottom of it, they are creating a sense of calm for, why? Self-preservation. They want a very simple system for self-preservation. And simple security brings a sense of calm. That's why these people are usually really good money savers. It's because money brings security and security keeps chaos at bay and creates this sense of calm that I'm talking about. And they can't be calm if they don't have financial security. They have to have financial security. They like to start things off with a deep understanding of what's in it for me? What is the financial reward? What is the financial investment? What's this going to cost me emotionally, energetically, and financially. They want to have a deep understanding of the financial reward or the investment that is being required of them in the deal or in the partnership. Are you too expensive? And that's not just with money. It's not just with money. They like understanding money and all of the things pertaining to it. And they're often the ones um, in the partnership that are going to manage the money because they wouldn't feel safe or secure letting someone else do it. It makes them to it makes them calm to be the money counter. They want to count the cold hard cash. And I don't think they could ever truly cope very well um, in every aspect of their life if they weren't sort of in charge of the finances because they wouldn't feel secure. They would feel like they couldn't be a good protector. They couldn't have self-preservation. Um, they couldn't feel strong without money. So they're very, very materialistic oriented, materialistic oriented. They, they really have a hard time believing in things that are just ideas or concepts. They like cold, hard cash. They like the material world. If they can Taste it, touch it, see it, they can believe it. But they have a hard time believing in just the dream, right? They, it needs to be of value. It needs to make money. It needs to be pragmatic, practical, tangible, touchable. They are of the tactile, touchable world. This is really strong for Taurus rising. It's bigger than normal. You know, yeah, we all like money, right? Yippee Yahoo. But Taurus rising, huge, huge, huge. Um, they may even become so obsessed with this. This might become such an exaggerated value that they become paranoid that they never have enough, that they don't have enough money, resources, or provisions. So let's talk about their early childhood because this is where all this got developed. They usually had a more dominant mother in some way, shape, or form. Uh, mother became more profound and father became passive. And these little apple cheek babies um, often had a mom that got jealous of them. Tell me if this is true. Mom sort of felt like she was a servant to the family, cooking, cleaning, doing the household. And mom might not have even gotten to self-develop in the way that she really wanted to or craved. And she might not even be in touch with her feelings of being jealous of her child, because um, that's not a good thing, right? And that creates chaos if I'm in touch with it. So I just put that in the corner and I don't admit that and I don't think about it and I don't acknowledge it. I just keep doing what I do. I keep my routine so I don't have to look at my jealousy. But this can create problems later for the Taurus rising person with other women in the Taurus rising's adult life um, that she'll have to work through. She may show a face of being you know, the Taurus rising might show a face of being solid as a rock and calm as a cucumber, but inside, 
you know, the Taurus rising may feel very insecure, secretly insecure and feeling unstable around expressing emotions and revealing the emotions and sorting out these emotions. So what does she do? She stonewalls even her own self. She even cuts off from her em own emotional exposure because it's going to create chaos. This is thirsty work. So Taurus rising is also the patient builder. They have an endurance. They are pragmatic. And again, that pragmatic side is because they like to keep things simple and uncomplicated. Gemini's worst fear and Scorpio's nightmare. Scorpio loves the rich complexity. It mesmerizes them. And the gory complexity lulls them to sleep. It's like, it's like complexity is the Scorpio's little bedtime rockabye baby lullaby where Taurus rising just wants to fall asleep to the sounds of waterfall waterfalls and the sweet birds chirping outside chirp chirp and uh, they don't want complexity they keep all that at bay they become very loyal to what they build and they are loyal to their friendships and their partnerships and their homes and they're very very reliable inside of their family however because they are so loyal to you they expect the same from you to them they will demand and command this in their relationships. So at their worst, they can treat people like commodities, as if they built you so you owe them your loyalty and you need to be loyal to the way that they like doing things. So don't just be loyal to them, be loyal to their belief system, be loyal to their ideas, be loyal to their agenda, be loyal to their thought process. Be loyal to the fact that they like to eat, you know, uh, ruffled potato chips and don't make them, don't make them not eat the ruffled kind. And <laughs> you know, they can be serious control freaks because of that. So this can turn someone into just a crazy freakazoid. Tauruses have this really long patient side and then literally, literally they just blow. Do you remember like that old Schlitz beer commercial where the bull runs through the wall? Do you remember that? Is anybody, is anybody my age on here? Please tell me if you remember that. <laughs> and if you don't, I am going to cut and paste it. I'm going to find it and cut and paste it and put it in my notes. And I want you to go check it out. It's like from the eighties or something. And I know I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> I'm probably older than everybody watching this, but this is a great, great commercial. It's the Schlitz beer commercial where the bull runs through the wall. It's like just all of a sudden, boom, they can just completely be a bull in a China shop, completely wreck havoc after they've been so peaceful and loving and graceful and calm as a cucumber. Not really internally, internally, it's so chaotic inside that they're really just tamping that down, especially if it's just the rising sign. So let's talk about why they get jealous. They are really possessive around their things. And you, lucky you, might be just one of those things that they are very fixed and controlling about. They have very specific ideas on how you should be interacting with them and how you should be interacting with life. And they can get so beyond crazy jealous if you pay anyone other than them the slightest bit of attention. They feel that they, if they love you, they and if they've invested in you, they feel like they own you and they cannot deal, cannot deal with you even looking like you may not value them or that you're going to swap out your loyalty for another fake loyal person because they know nobody, nobody is as loyal as they are to you. And so you're going to just throw that away. Oh my God. Tell me in the notes below if you've ever had a bull, a Taurus, Taurus rising, uh, go full-blown psycho on you, just psycho jealous. I mean, their temperament can end relationships for good. And it's not always because they walked away. Actually, they have a hard time leaving. Remember, they even stay attached to their wounds. Um, but because the other person cannot handle their ironic psycho madness bursting out of nowhere like that commercial I was telling you about. When they lose their ever-loving mind, I mean, get out of the way. 
They are so potent and so dangerous. They make an Aries look mild when they're pissed off. Tell me if you've ever had a Taurus piss you off. I've been in the presence of that and that is scary, scary. Tell me your stories um, about the hot tempered Taurus rising. I want to know. Tell me the good, the bad, and the ugly. And share here in the in the comments because everybody learns. Help me build this great Taurus community where we can flush out the concepts and the ideas. And I want to tell you though that when they're mad, there's no reasoning with them. Have you ever tried to reason with a mad bull? <laughs> good luck. <laughs> nope. At their worst, they cannot and will not see another way. They will not see another perspective. The reason why they get possessive, jealous, and controlling is they are too loyal. They become unhealthy and they become too loyal to their own thoughts and values. They find it unbearable to see it your way. There's no compromising because that would be a threat unto themselves. They feel they owe it to themselves, their values, their family, their traditions, their pocketbook, their money, their home, their job, whatever it is they value to keep it alive, to not have it destroyed. And so they will not end or quit their own belief system and adopt someone else's. No, these people know who they are. They are not baffled or confused. They're not a Gemini weighing the pros and cons objectively or a Libra, you know, trying to figure out, you know, which, which is the better. No, they know they are black and white. They know and they own their own belief system. And to be honest with you, it's really quite refreshing because they know exactly where they stand and what their preferences are. It serves the secondary purpose of if I don't have to think very much and I can just keep the value system that my parents gave me and I can just be loyal to what it is I came to believe in, then I keep my life simple. I keep it mundane. I keep it fixed. You know, no moving thought pieces around in their brains. No, no, no. Don't shake up their minds too much. We got to keep it the same forever. <laughs> now, if you're healthy and if you're a Taurus rising and you don't relate to this, you probably have a lot of Gemini in your chart or you're a really healthy, self-actualized person. And I want to know about that too, because there are, so, and you'll see right now, I'm going to tell you, there are so many amazing Taurus Risings. But the only way you can talk to a Taurus Rising and get them to open up their mind is to ask them questions. This is truly the only way to expand their thinking. Make them come up with the answers. Make them find the answer within. And make them find the truth only by you nudging them slightly or giving them some prompts to chew on. So let's talk about what a Taurus rising looks like. Think of these Taurus rising people um, while I talk to you about their characteristics. Miley Cyrus, David Beckham, Martin Luther King, Kate Blanchett, Serena Williams, Vivian Leigh, Connor McGregor, that's interesting, right? Um, George Washington was Taurus rising. These are all Taurus risings. Uh, Rita Hayworth and Halle Berry. And also I found out Charles Manson um, is an obvious, unhealthy, possessive, controlling, jealous uh, Taurus rising. I don't know. I have to go look at his sick chart. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what his other signs are. I just found out that he was a Taurus rising. But Taurus risings have a very serious relationship with the planet Venus. So they're born to experience beauty at a really heightened level. And they have a social charm and a social grace. And they have an appeal about their looks. You know, not always, but usually they're more round and bigger bovine and curvy. They have sensual curves and gorgeous cheekbones. Their eyes can be really big with long lashes and they have super plump lips. Obviously, I'm not a Taurus rising, but um, they usually have really compelling smiles and their body language creates a sensual caress for you to linger at and look at and love that. They like for you to admire their physicality. They will coo at you and make you feel like you're just wrapped up in a cashmere blanket by a cozy warm fire. They just make you feel calm and um, serene and they have a sense of pride in their body language. They're almost always compelling, beautiful, well-dressed, 
fashionable. They're the ones that will wear the shoes that actually hurt their feet. They like beauty over comfort. They do like to be comfortable, but if they can get both in one thing, they'll take it. Um, they really do care about beauty and they're good at creating it. They're really, they love fashion. They create fashion and beauty and harmony and music that that is just all so seductive and alluring. They have a really seductive way about them. And even if they're not drop dead gorgeous, and oftentimes they just flat out are, they do have an appeal always that lures you into them. They have a Venetian way about them. Aphrodite, you know, the goddess of love, peace, beauty, and harmony is their ruling, is their chart ruler. And so if they are a man, they're the Eros, you know, they're the lover. And so it, it makes you, they make you, they're magnetic. They make you want to interact with them. They make you want to stare at them, to devour them, to taste them, to try them. They are so, so alluring. And they have a calm and beautiful walk usually, and they act as if they are in no rush. They, they walk as if they have, they're balancing an egg on their head. They embody serenity. Like problem, what problem? I don't have a problem. Do you have a problem? I don't have a problem. There's no problems. I'm calm and serene. So <laughs> where do you have Taurus in your chart? Because this is how you will um, embrace that aspect of your chart. So which house do you have Taurus in? So if it's in the, if it's in the first house, but you're not a Taurus rising, you will still have this kind of presence. So there is my Taurus rising video for now. I hope you liked it. I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted. That was a whole lot of energy for my Taurus Rising video. And I look forward to seeing you here again on my channel. Please subscribe. I hope you'll go explore all my videos and my Rising Sign series should be popping up after this. And let me know what series you'd like for me to do next. Money through the houses, sex through the signs, the moon signs. Give me a heads up and let me know and leave me a comment below. I look forward to seeing you here next time soon. Take care. I'm Meredith with Soul Navigation. Bye for now.